Hi folks, Toad Hancock's here with Visordown.com and welcome to the full review of the Indian FTR 1200. So we've had this bike for quite a bit of time um, and I've been that busy with reviewing short termers and this is more of a mid-term loan that we've had from Indian, very kindly, um, that I've, I've only really done a couple of sort of major trips or days really of, of sort of 100 mile days on it. The rest of it has just sort of been bimbling about. But we have had a thorough test on it. I've done an MPG test on it. I've done some distance work on motorway and dual carriageway on it as well, which I really, really needed to do. And actually was quite rewarding. Um, so I'm going to go through all of that with you now. But before I do, I'm just going to recap um, everything that we know about this bike. So it is £11,899. It is the bottom rung of Indian FTR ownership. So there are uh, there is this bike, So and then the one above this, is the Indian FTR 1200 Rally, which has got kind of like some stylistic add-ons to it and slightly different tyres, so it's got a slightly sort of pseudo knobbly off-road tyre fitted to it. Um, then there is the FTR 1200S, which is a big step up in spec and refinement over this bike in terms of it's got a TFT dash, it's got things like high-level cornering, ABS and lean sensitive traction control. Um, it's got upgraded suspension. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a lot more bike for your money. And then at the top of the range, there is the FTR 1200 Carbon, which we've all been dribbling over um, for a number of weeks since Indian sort of announced it as a full, as a full um, production version. It's basically started to look like the FTR 750 flat track racer that's been doing really rather well in the American flat track racing um, series. So, without further ado i'm going to talk about the engine because it is probably 99 percent of what this bike is all about it is a thumping great sledgehammer of an engine it's 1203 cc producing um 120 bhp and 120 newton meters which is about 88 pound foot of torque and yeah it is it is just a sledgehammer and it's just been designed in such a way that it it accentuates every sensation that you every degree that you open the throttle further the engine just makes the most of it and lets you know exactly what is going on um i don't know that it's going to be the fastest accelerating bike out there but my god when you open that throttle you know about it um both through the seat of your pants and your, your kind of your cognitive senses and also because the the bark from the exhaust is so angry it is literally like god is gargling with bull bearings it sounds fantastic um really really lovely engine to use with a great character loads of pops and bangs on the downshifts and stuff like that all the kind of stuff that big kids like me really really enjoy so i'm very happy about that um Today we had a bit of a mixed bag of riding, so there were some country roads and back roads and B roads and so on, and then uh, we've been sat on the uh, M40 and the A43 for about the last hour. So what I got was quite a good mixed um, MPG test, and it's indicating that we've done about 47, B uh, 47 MPG, I don't know said BHP, um, but yeah, 47 MPG, I don't think that's too bad from a 1200cc bike that has got zero wind or weather protection and nothing for me to hide behind. Um, so I am basically sat up like a big sail gobbling up petrol where the bike doesn't actually want me to. Um, the fueling of this bike, I have to talk about that because this is an electronic throttle, not a cable operated item, which is pretty cool. Um, and it works really rather well. The fueling low down is a little bit fluffy. Um, just a tiny bit in the first initial part of the opening of the throttle but it's nice and progressive and it's not too snatchy and it's not too grabby and there's no surprises in there to sort of catch you out in any way shape or form while we're chatting about the um, throttle connection and the engine I just want to move on to the chassis really because like I said it is the base model FTR 1200 um, so we have got non-adjustable um, front forks and we've got a rear shock absorber which is the uh, lovely side mounted item that you can see over here which has got rebound damping um, and mechanical spring preload adjustability that is all that you've got on the bike effectively um i really like the setup of it i'm going to be honest with you i wouldn't really change much i think it's just the right amount of hard it is firm i'm going to say that much um there isn't there isn't a massive amount of plushness in the suspension um and it's not very forgiving but it does make the most of the bike's 
geometry in that it allows you to actually push on. The bike does like a corner quite a lot, which you don't really get with this style of cruisery, flat tracky um, sort of style bikes. But it's not the fastest to turn in. It's got these Dunlop dirt track um, style tires on it. So getting the bike into the corner is a bit of an act of physical aggression um, but once it's there it holds the line really really well and you can modulate the throttle and touch the brakes mid corner and it doesn't actually really upset it and I think that's partly down to this nice sort of solid but not absolutely rock hard suspension setup that the bike has got. Um, moving on from the suspension we've got a decent set um, spec of Brembo brakes they're not the top spec Brembo style EMA sort of stuff but they're decent decent spec um, Brembo uh, calipers with the Brembo radially mounted master cylinder um, up there as well. So the brakes are absolutely brilliant. The ABS is a tad rudimentary in that A it's a two channel ABS so just front and rear only, no cornering on this bike. Um, that's reserved for the higher echelons of the FTR ownership world. Um, but it kind of, I, I don't know if it's so much the tyres or the ABS but it cuts in absolutely fine so it all works but it's just a little bit abrupt when it does. I don't suppose it's too much of a bad thing at least you know that it's working away in the background there which isn't a bad thing at all um so while we're just talking about abs may as well just reiterate this bike doesn't have any riding modes it doesn't have any traction control um it is bare bones stripped back motorcycling how it should be almost in a way um and i'll tell you what I've loved riding it and there is one thing that I've done today which I didn't do any of the other time that I had it because it's been a little da bit damp as you can see and that is getting the tail out round roundabouts. I did five laps of the roundabout at the end of the A43 and the M40 um, earlier on just because it was so much fun um, just to get the bike lent over on, on, on its side and just give it a, a couple of hundred rpm more than you've got at the moment and that back end will just ever so gradually just step out and you'll be able to hold it there and then when you finish having fun close the throttle a little bit and it'll just all bring it back up into line it's so much fun you could literally burn tanks of fuel just riding round roundabouts on this thing it's hilariously good fun um you can do it in the in the drive but you've got to be a little bit more aggressive with the throttle and your corner speed's kind of got to be a little bit slower on the entry and then faster on the exit but because everything's getting a little bit faster it feels a little bit more dangerous whereas in the wet it's like drifting in slow motion it's honestly it will never fail to bring a grin to my face and I think it's really cool that the bike can actually do that on the road because it's normally something that's reserved for riding on dirt and riding around in circles. And this can do it just going down your local high street. It's absolutely awesome. So while we're talking about the um, handling of the bike, just want to go through some of the dimensions of it. So we've got a 230 kilogram claimed uh, weight ready to ride. Um, the weight is all kind of under the seat and under the rider sort of thing. Um, and it is mostly engine. That's the, the, the bulk of this bike is that, that huge rate 1200cc um, Indian V-twin engine. Doesn't feel weighty on the move at all. It feels really nicely proportioned and balanced. Um, I think the one thing that I'll say is that it is quite a compact bike to sit on and to look at. That you, you look at this and you think, where's the 230 kilograms hidden? Well, it is all in the engine, but because it's quite compact, it kind of makes it gives it this solid sort of stability sort of feel to it and um, the seat is 805 millimeters it states on the website that it's two position adjustable i can't find how you do it but it claims that it's 805 to 840 this i'm saying is 805 mil because i can sit on it absolutely not a problem and flat feet um on the floor so it's got to be 805 because i'm the short ass basically we also have cruise control fitted as standard which works very very well on this bike it is kind of the only creature comfort that you've got other than the padding in the seat and the abs system um but yeah it works absolutely faultlessly and flawlessly and it is really really cool um so what do we like about the ftr 1200 um, I've got to say, just today, um, the whole tail out, waggy tail, sliding around on the road, yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. If I had one of these, I would um, spend long days just riding around roundabouts and getting the back end out because it is an absolute hoot. The engine is uh, it's about as refined as a, as a sledgehammer, um, but it's just as exciting and is, uh, it's, it's really, really pleasurable unit to ride. 
not just because of the speed that the engine can can fire this thing down the road up but because of that whole character that the the engine gives to this bike um it is a very cool lump of metal um and the other thing that I quite like about it is that you look at it and you don't think it would be, but it's actually pretty comfortable. Um, and even sitting on the motorway uh, today at sort of 75, 80 miles an hour with nowhere to hide, um, I felt absolutely fine and could have probably sat there for a good few hours longer had I needed to. Uh, what don't we like about the FTR 1200? Um, not a lot really. Some of the plasticky finishes, and I know it's the base model FTR, but some of the plastic finishes could be, some of the plastic parts I should say, could be just finished slightly better than they are. There's a couple of little edges where you'd just, if I owned one, I'd probably just go around it with a little bit of emery cloth and just smooth it off. The uh, the only other thing that I can really say um, is that the ABS system, it's a slightly sort of rudimentary and when it does engage is a little bit agricultural. Um, but as I said, you do at least know that it's there. So, on to the verdict. Rolling. I said it in my first impressions video that I thought that this bike was kind of motorcycling distilled, um, and I still think it is. If you look at the latest crop of super naked motorcycles and are just getting baffled by the level of electronic interve intervention that they that they have in them and the amount of riding modes that they have and choosing so many degrees of separation between you and your vehicle, this is the perfect antidote for it because it is motorcycling of the old school. You have got an engine, you've got brakes, you've got suspension, you've got a fuel tank. Um, and it's all kind of working together to create this experience that you or I've not experienced on the road before. I've not experienced this feeling of riding the FTR 1200 on any other motorcycle that I've ever ridden, um, which is really cool. And I've enjoyed it a heck of a lot. And I'm gonna be a little bit gutted to see the old girl go. But it's not gonna be the last Indian that we're riding because we've got a couple more lined up. We're gonna be testing out a an Indian Springfield in the next couple of days, riding it all the way up to North Lincolnshire um, and then all the way back down again, including a bit of a tour of the area. So stay tuned for that one, folks, and thank you very much for watching. If you like that video, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. For all the latest news, reviews, and motorcycle features, please head over to visordown.com. Thanks for your time.